listen to this. I'm sorry in advance for any like background noise, but I'm actually on holiday at the moment. And no, definitely not Tenerife. With all the apparent evidence that we've all seen, been shown, heard, read, been sent from day one when he first went missing, that CCTV in the nightclub, right up until the 29th day when his apparent remains were found. Coupled with the fact of the intel that I've received from Tenerife, and they are risking themselves to get me this intel. The truth about what happened. So the intel he's saying he's got is obviously someone who's working over there or living over there and could incriminate all these people if found to be true. As we know, everything that comes out is only speculation. You have to realise that. But the claims in this video from Bobs and Bits 111, you'll get to understand. To Jay Slater may well have been staring us in the face the whole time. Firstly, Lucy and Brad are good friends with Tom Hilton. Lucy and Brad meet Jay Slater at Queenfields. Now, there is only one year's worth of social media pics with Brad and his apparent best friend, Jay Slater. Just that alone is dodgy when you think about it properly. Chris Tenerife and Luggy are heavily involved in the society, as it's called, or as we know it, the Mafia in Tenerife. Now, Luggy will probably be the next one to disappear because he's pissing a lot of people off at the moment. But Chris Tenerife is tripping himself up all over the place. And there's lots of people who are swearing they aren't involved who actually are heavily involved. Chris Tenerife claimed on one of his TikToks that no civilians were allowed to go up to the mountains for the first two weeks and help with the search unless they were called up by the Guardia Seville, which is absolute crap. It's just him covering his tracks. We weren't investigating Jay's disappearance. We weren't up in the area where Jay went missing for the first two weeks. Why? Because specialist teams, Guardia Seville, it was treated as a missing persons, persons case. They were out searching. When there was a call for volunteers to go up and help, I had already done research and I knew at some point there was going to be a call for volunteers. I went up as a volunteer to try to help the authorities to find Jay so that that boy could be taken home and given the send off he deserved and so that the family could have some peace. Right, before we get on to the next part. If obviously that first part now, make sure you leave your comments in the description about that first part. Just put part one and we'll go through any replies from then. Then we'll carry on now. He should just find Jay and give him the send off that he deserves. I thought he was just missing. How did he know he was dead? One from Tom Hilton covering his tracks. I have nothing to do with this. Apparently he was in Tenerife during the surge. I didn't this know is that. our friend Tom Hilton showing that he was in Tenerife at the time. Check the date, 18th of June. And here's more evidence of volunteers. Damn. The search. Check the date. Chris Tenerife just told us that no one was allowed to help out with the search. Then there's the police doing their job, pulling over vans in South Tenerife. A car company on the 20th of June offering free cars to go up to the mountains to help with the search for people that couldn't get up there. I thought Chris Tenry said nobody was allowed to go up there. Oh, and it's not an Airbnb, it's Booking.com. And strangely, there's two reviews giving excellent reviews. I wonder who that could be. Strange. And conveniently, someone stayed in that booking.com on the 29th of June and the 27th of July for four nights each time. Same person, obviously fake name. I did do some research on this weeks before this video has been out and anything else, and I did see this for Dell. I did research it. I might have made a video on it, but I can't remember. But you know, I've made 90 videos on the Jay Slater case, so if you want to go and watch, you can go TikTok. And there's your fake name it was booked under. And in this clip, 
you'll see the police in a black and red checking white vans. Remember I said on a previous video that the black and red police only deal with serious crime and don't get involved with missing persons. So guys, part two now. What do you think about this one? Leave your comments below. Up to this stage anyway. And this video shows the distance between the road and the ravine where he was found, okay? Now, I think Marianne stated on one of her TikToks, unfortunately, that it was a 20-minute walk. See if you guys think this is a 20-minute walk. Marianne has also been a big person to cover this case as well, as myself and Bobs and Bits. And a few selected others. There's also a picture of Tom Hilton and Brad standing over a grave, holding hands, showing friendship. There is no long-term evidence of Lucy and Brad's friendship with Jay anywhere. Chris Tenery and Luggage were called up to Masker to cover this up. That Airbnb or Booking.com was just a decoy and he was taken and held on that boat. They staged a fall, an accident. Most things that everyone's focusing on had been staged. It was all just a decoy to throw you off the scent. The Airbnb, it was all staged. Lucy May wasn't allowed to show her face on camera or else she would have been next. It was Brad at that Airbnb. Notice how we've never seen or not seen anything of Brad since day one. Obviously it's all speculation at the end of the day and we'll never know until the truth really, really comes out. But will it ever come out? The Mafia owned that booking.com or Airbnb and the lady next door, she knows full well the protocol. That's why... When Warren and Zach turned up, she put a hand in their faces, put the chairs in quickly and got in and shut the doors. She knew. Come on, she was an old lady who ran a business up in the mountains, old school. Forget social media. How on earth would she know who Zach and Warren were unless she'd been told? Are you Rocky? That makes sense, by the way. Obviously, a woman, especially in Spain, they don't usually use social media. They're a few years behind, a lot of years behind. Lucy May, Brad, they all work for the society along with hundreds more, okay? Some are mules, some are runners, okay? Now I believe that this is a premeditated revenge attack on Jay Slater for what happened with Tom Hilton. So this information is what people have said from day one when it was Tom Hilton on Facebook and that was the very first thing and when someone pulled the report up online and said these things about Tom Hilton and it's a revenge attack and then someone said well why would they do that when there was 20 of them who attacked Jay Slater I mean who attacked Tom Hilton obviously Jay Slater was just a person who was there but didn't have any involvement so is it or isn't it it's it's a it's a catch-22 type thing so this is obviously the next part so if you want to leave comments below on this part let us know as a favor for Lucy May she went to the society or the mafia and asked for a favour and they obliged because they had the means to do it in Tenerife. You can't get away with this in the UK. If the police are everywhere, investigations everywhere and the rules are too strict. In Tenerife, it's perfect. So when Lucy May approaches the mafia for this favour, they didn't even think about it or question it. It's bread and butter for them, but they want something in return. Maybe a 30 grand GoFundMe account. How about that? Oh, and just for the... To be honest, that bit there, it's a young 16, 18 year old girl asking a big mafia boss, cartel, whatever, for a favour. It's one of them, is it or isn't it? But then again, is it, if she is one of the mules, then she's got contacts with the big people. So that's another catch-22. The record, there are lots of members of the society or mafia that operate on all these pages on TikTok and they try their best to throw people off the scent by like, you know, degrading the story. One in particular might be Luggy or McLovin or McLovin or how he keeps changing his name, which is a bit strange. So guys, 
all the people that I've mentioned in this video, I believe, have co-conspired, perverted the course of justice, and worked together to keep what happened to Jay Slater a secret and directed everyone's attention in all the wrong places and are still doing it today. So guys, what do you think about